So if you're buying commercial properties, I hope that story I just shared with you actually gives you some frame of reference on how this would this would actually affect your utility of what you're buying. Okay, because for that young so-called business owner, I feel very sad for them <laughs> and they are stuck with it uh, for a period of time already. Okay, so that's point this. Topic number two, we talk about different loan types or different loan given a commercial property purchase or even a residential property purchase. So in this instance, we talk about commercial as much as we learn so much about residential already. So commercial loans are more unregulated than residential. And bank and financial institution can decide to give a high interest rates based on different assessments, such as how is the company credit score or if not the profile of the buyer's credit score. And even loan to value, they may also drop it as well. Okay. And next, TDSR is also based on the bank's institution own guideline. So if different bank has different guidelines, there is no a blanket uh, so-called TDSR for all the uh, banks in Singapore. So different bank may offer different loan amount as well. So it is highly uncertain. And also interest rates are higher, about 30 to 40% than the residential rates. So typically, if you are going at about 1.5% for residential loan, commercial loan should be about 1.9%. And again, we can't use CPF to repay the mortgage for commercial property purchase. And the sale and purchase of the commercial property will also be subjected to GST as well. And if you are buying a VUC commercial property, it also follows the progressive payment schedule. So your profile and situation may result in different outcomes, inclusive of the utility of the property. So what does this mean? To give you some example of a very interesting so-called event that happened over the weekend. So me, I was celebrating my, yeah, my youngest boy's second birthday. Okay. And we were at DG Field, which is at Serangoon Gardens. Okay. So we came across a cafe and this cafe basically sells a very nice bongoli. They are marketing, they are, they are so-called uh, pictorial where they took up the chef uh, so-called uh, dishes were so beautiful. Okay. So we ordered the food and they tell them that look, we'll be sitting in the back, uh, bring the food over. Okay. So we made the payment. So they told us that, yeah, sorry, we are only a takeaway counter. I say, then what are those bench and so-called table for? They say it's for our own stuff. I say, does it make sense? They say that, I'm sorry, we bought this place with the intent to convert it into a, a cafe or restaurant dining, but we do not get the license. I say, you didn't know this from the onset. They say, yeah, we didn't know because we saw a restaurant down the road, which is an Italian restaurant that is already there. So we thought that we could actually easily get a license. So we bought the place in good faith that we will get the license. But on the day when they started opening up their first day of so-called operation, they have patrons that came in and the patrons are basically the residents around the landed precinct. The patrons actually ask uh, the, the cafe owners, okay? Um, is this a dining or is this a takeout a cafe? They say, well, right now we are operating as a takeout, but uh, hopefully soon enough we will become a dining cafe. And the and the patron actually replied, I hope it stays this way forever. And you was taken aback. <laughs> okay, so it's like wow, what kind of hostile reply on the first day of operation? And then you realize that actually the people over here, given the houses are detached and also. Uh, semi these and whatnot, they value their privacy. And the fact that you have a cafe here, that sort of intrude their private space. So when I heard that, I was like, wow, what a, what a nice welcome message, right? <laughs> so with that, I think it's very important that given this instance I just shared with you, you got to seek and ensure you get a mortgage specialist for commercial properties, especially so many things unregulated. All right. So again, the mortgage specialist basically like, you know, mortgage master themselves, they are able to help you check with the, with the lawyers and whatnot to make sure that you get the right financing first thing first and second thing that these licenses on terms of track record, when was the last time you was gotten and what are your chances of getting it as well. Okay. So if you're buying commercial properties, I hope that story I just shared with you actually gives you some frame of reference on how this would, this would actually affect your utility of uh, what you're buying, okay? Because for that for that young so-called uh, business owner, I feel very sad for them <laughs> and they are stuck with it uh, for a period of time already, okay? So don't fall in the same trap. So next, we need to talk about residential properties. 
BUC building under construction has only floating rates, unfortunately. So if you're buying uh, building under construction or new build properties, there is no fixed rate. There's only floating rates available for you. And of course, at the bottom, we are comparing this to a uh, resale uh, payment scheme altogether. So this is how it looks like on the screen. So this is a typical progressive payment or uh, schedule, or if not a sequence of the down payment as well. So I'm going to run through this sequence, a very quick one with you. All right. So on the onset, if you were to buy something, you put down a booking fee of 5% and this is solely by cash only. And within three weeks of receiving the sales and purchase agreement, you then exercise the option to purchase to purchase the property. Okay. So once you do this, within the next 14 days, you're supposed to pay your buyer stamp duties. And this is the tax rates of how it looks like. And for building under construction, you could actually pay your stamp duty by CPF first. Okay, so this is very different comparing to a resale, which I'll explain later when we pull out the resale chart or payment schedule. So, uh, so if you do not have CPF, you can pay cash. And within eight weeks of exercising the option to purchase, you will then need to pay the next 15% on the eight week mark. And also the legal fees that range from two five to four thousand dollars, and these are all CPF and cash payable, and also valuation fee if you are taking a bank loan. All right. So over here, this is how the progressive payment schedule starts. All right, and this is the ten percentage that you need to pay during the foundation. Okay, and this entire flow over here that I'm kind of covering right now from my mouse, this works out to be eighty percent. Okay, so foundation typically takes six to nine months, followed by the next superstructure six to nine months, and just. Uh, you know, at the back of my, uh, as a rule of thumb, every 5% is three to six months all the way until TOP. That's where you pay the, the very heavy 25%. Okay, but even so, the last 15%, okay, is only payable one year later after TOP. Okay, so when it comes to a resale, this is how it looks like. At the stage of granting the option, you pay 1%, which is cash only to the purchaser's name and then 4% you either pay to the CVY account or you not directly to the owner's name also and this has to be cash only. So the buyer stamp duties typically we pay within, of course the exercising typically we take 14 days okay sometimes it's up to mutual agreement and the stamp duties is then payable when you exercise your option at the law firm. So this has to be cash only okay so typically there are in the past there are agents or even practitioners on the ground making the mistakes of thinking that this could be paid by CPF first. No, this has to be cash first and then reimbursed by CPF upon completion. All right, so do make sure that you have the cash upfront to pay the stamp duties uh, for resale property, okay? Then legal fees are the same, same for valuation and at the date of completion, you pay the remaining 95%, okay? So if you were to put a uh, house illustration and numbers into this equation, how does it look like, okay? So over here, we are talking about purchase price of $2 million. Loan to value of 75%, max loan works out to be 1.5 million. On a tenure of 30 years, which is a max tenure, interest rate of about 1.75%, and the current income of the purchaser, joint income to be 20,000. So if you put down the numbers, this is how it looks like 5% works out to be 100,000. Within 14 days of signing the sales and purchase agreement, this is your stamp duties, CPF payable and down payment of the next 15%. This happens on the eight weeks followed by the legal fees valuation. And shortly later, if foundation has not uh, been done, it's not done yet, uh, it will be called upon six to nine months later, especially so if you are buying something that launched recently. Okay, so this 10% is being break down into two portions where 5% goes to by way of cash or CPF. The next 5% is where the bank disperses for you because we are taking a 75% loan rate in this illustration and that's how it increased periodically all the way until TOP. So at $4,286 where my mouse is pointing, that's where you can start renting out your property already. Okay, but how is this comparing to a resale property? So when you talk about resale property, okay, so this is where we talk about six, only 60% of your loan is being caught for even though you take a 75%. So you saw the last 15% to be caught for one year later after TOP. Comparing it to resale, you actually get the full disbursement on completion date, which happens eight to 12 weeks later for exercising the option. So in this instance, if you were to compare the opportunity of you, the rate of return is actually higher for a new build because you get to rent out at only paying 60% of your 75% loan disbursement for one year. Whereas when you buy, uh, resale straight away you are 
having that full disbursement at $5,385 a month. And you could see that this is almost a thousand dollar difference in your money repayment. Okay. And this is very interesting because many people do not know about this and uh, they just want immediate cash flow, right? So they do not know that within the first year mark, if you see a lot of uh, investors during their first years, they are usually renting out the property and then selling with tenancy to the next purchaser. And that's the reason why. All right. So next, we need to talk about something else.